Choosing the right business partner could make or break you. Today, we're going to talk about 10 different types of business partners. So look, choosing a business partner is very similar to dating. You don't just kind of make a decision and say, I want to marry this person because in a way, your business partner, your credits are tied, you're going to see each other regularly. There's a lot of different things that you're tied to each other, whether this is going to work out or not. Money, just like marriages, you know, there's a different story between dating and you tell people, this is my girlfriend, this is my boyfriend versus this is my wife who I'm going to have kids with. So if you're going to build a business with somebody, it's very important to know different kind of business partners and what to do about it at the beginning stages of it so you don't have long-term conflicts. Let me get right into it. First kind of business partner you may have is a leaner. Somebody that you and him or you and her were talking, you felt good about this working out for you, but then this person's constantly leaning on you to grow the business and they're not. I get calls regularly from people that say, my brother leans on me, I do all the work, he doesn't do nothing. You know, my friend and I started a business at the beginning, he worked very hard the first six months, last six months, we've been making money, I don't see him at the office, he comes, he leaves, he relies on me to do because he says, you said you wanted to be the CEO, you said you wanted to be the face, so you do all this stuff and I'm just here on the side, right? That's the leaner. So then there's a bank. The guy that's the bank is somebody that puts in the money and says, look, I give you the money, you go figure things out. And you say, well, I, is it kind of like a business partnership? Not really, I'm just giving you the money. You go make the business work. Are you gonna help me a little bit? Nope, it's the money. You go do what you gotta do. So that's the bank relationship with you when you're working with somebody that's the bank. The next one is the boss. The boss is, uh, used to be your friend, you guys used to be buddies, maybe you went to college to get all of a sudden you start a business. He's kind of bossing you, you need to do this, I need you to do this, have you done this yet? Did we get this yet? Like, wait a minute, why are you bossing me around and how do you handle a situation like that? You know, I'm the one that runs the show here, that's the position I have here. Yeah, but we're friends, so there's kind of a conflict in how to handle that. Next one is a guilt trip. Guilt trip is funny because, let's just say you're the single one. He's the married with kids, but you started a company together. And at the beginning it was like, we're gonna go lights out, we're gonna go make this work, I get it, I'm, I'm all in. And he had family, he had kids at the time, and you didn't, and he makes you feel guilty. He's like, you know what, I, I, I haven't seen them, I gotta go home, and it's four o'clock, it's like, I gotta go home today, two o'clock, he's leaving early and he's giving you areas of guilt that you don't know how to handle because you're single, that person is guilty. You're kind of like, well, it, we started this business to get, yeah, but you know, you know, my family, my kids, and you don't know how to handle a situation like this. You're kind of immobilized, you're stuck, and internally you're ticked off at the guy, but you don't know what to say to the person. Next one is a, a bottom line or the ATM guy. Let me explain to you what this is. This is somebody where, you know, it's too much of a black and white situation. There is no gray area like, hey, we did this, did we make money or didn't we make money? So it's tough to talk to them in marketing because they're all about bottom line. And anytime money is made, the profit comes out quickly. So when you're like, let's reinvest and think about what well, this could work, well, is it gonna make us money or not? It's, yeah, I don't know yet, we may, we may not. No, let's just take the profits out. So it's a bottom line type of personality. Next one is machine gun. Tommy, this is somebody that uses your past mistakes over and over and over and over on you, where you're kind of like, oh my gosh, if I here have to have that be held over me again, it's gonna drive me nuts. But when that happens, it's a tough environment to be in. Next one is pansies. What I mean by pansies, the moment the company is having some tough times and something could happen that could break or somebody quits or resigns or partner, they crack totally crack, and they bring the morale down because they're your partner, but they're going on saying, you think what's gonna happen? Oh my gosh, what if we go out of business? And people that were okay just doing their business go lower because this person doesn't know how to handle pressure. The next one is loose lips. Loose lips is somebody that maybe does their work. They're good people. They're not trying to hurt you. They just can't help themselves with sharing the information with everybody. So imagine somebody who's loose lips. You got an environment. He's a partner. He goes home, tells his wife everything. His wife goes and has dinner with the other wives, and she tells them everything. And the next thing you know, it comes back to you. Why did you say that to anybody? Oh, I didn't tell it to anybody. I was just talking to my wife. Maybe some of the stuff you shouldn't even talk to your wife about, but I can't help myself. My wife, to, to, then that could be to people at the environment, and they're not doing it intentionally to hurt you. They just can't help themselves. But that's somebody that could be a business partner. The next one is a Band-Aid. Band-Aid is somebody that everything is just about short-term fix. Yet, yeah, you know, we gotta spend 100,000 or 2,000, let's just spend 2,000. We gotta spend uh, $50 or $5,000, let's just do the $50 job. Everything is that. Years ago, I had my S600, I took it to a dealership, and my dad had a guy that was known in the Middle Eastern community, so he said, take it to this guy, I took it to this guy, 
And he says, oh, I fixed it. He took $4,600 from me. I gave it to him. At a time, I was like, look, I don't want to give you $4,600, but I gave him $4,600. Then I take you to the dealership to sell the car. He says, sir, can you come over here, please? I said, what's that? He says, let me show you this right here. He lifts the car up. He says, who did you pay money to fix this? I'm like somebody that was referred to my dad that was a family friend. He says, this is what the guy did. He didn't do any job for you. He just did a quick fix. This cost $50 to make. I said, how much? He said, $50. I called the guy out, made sure everybody knew to never do business with this guy. And he didn't end up getting a client until the big book of business that he was about to get, he lost all of it because he was a Band-Aid guy. There's a lot of Band-Aid type of people in businesses, which eventually hurts the business big time because reputation spreads. Next one is strategic. Strategic is somebody that looks at you and says, it's pure logic. I think if I strategically partner myself with this guy, this could be a great person to leverage because it could help in different areas to help my business out. So this is actually not a bad thing. This could be a good thing, but it's logical, strategic partnership that could get results in maybe different areas of their lives. And it may not be fully to, let's just build this. It may be other areas to help them win in life as well. Maybe some other items that they're working on that this thing's going to help that as well. So look, you may be watching this right now saying, oh my gosh, that reminds me of Johnny. That's Bobby. This is Larry. Let me share this text with the people we worked at. Who does this person remind you of? That guy was a pansy. That guy was a loose lips. That guy was the ATM. That guy was a leaner. Fine. It may be true, but let me give you an idea why this takes place many times. Many times this takes place because when there is conflict or there's an issue, the famous three things that people do is either they fight, they flight, or they freeze happens, which means what? When there is a flight, means, oh my gosh, this didn't work out, this is tough, boom, you run away from the problem. Yeah, it's normal, it's supposed to be happening, but you run away, flight. Freezes, oh my gosh, I just figured out how this person is. This person keeps doing this to me and they're bossing me around. You don't do nothing about it, you freeze. Or there's fight, you sit down and have a conversation because you know, what I just said, fight, flight, freeze, was written in a book called Crucial uh, Accountability and Crucial Conversations. Great books. But the other one is from Five Dysfunctions of a Team. Patrick Lencioni breaks it down in the best way. At the bottom of any of these issues you may have here with your business partner is absence of trust. You don't trust your partner who's the boss. You don't trust your partner who's a bottom line ATM. You don't have a certain level of trust or they don't trust you. The trust is both ways. So if you don't sit down and address that, nothing's going to be fixed. So in order, when there's absence of trust that leads to fear of conflict, then there is no commitment, there is no accountability, then it's an inattention to results, then the company's going down. So what do you have to do at the beginning? If there is an opportunity where you lack trust in them or they lack trust in you, you got to have the conversation with them and then have the issue. Once you address them, you bring up the conflict. Hey, John, what's that? I feel like you're bossing me around. Really? What do you mean I'm bossing you around? I don't boss you around. Yeah, you bossed me around. Let me just tell you what you did the last five times. Listen, man, we started off, this thing was exciting, but you've been a, you went from a friend to a boss now, and I don't like that. It's really bothering me. I missed this guy before. By the way, I've had many of these conversations with people before, right? And then you either sit there like, wow, this guy's got a point. That person's got a point. It used to be this and it used to be that. I mean, this person's got a point. That person's got a point. You can't handle the pressure. Oh my gosh, maybe I'm a short-term thinker. And then you give your illustration and you explain it to them and it may get heated. But the only way you're going to resolve these issues is to have that conflict. Because once you have the conflict and you have the conversation with them, guess how the conversation ends? Here's how it ends. It's either going to end... Screw you, the hell with you. I can't believe you took this approach. And, and even if you were just being very gentle about it, I can't believe you took this approach. And then they may go settle down. The next day they're going to come back and they're going to say, look, I thought about it last night. Oh, yeah? What happened? Can we talk? Yeah, let's talk. Um, I think you're right in a couple of things. And I wasn't too happy about you bringing it up. But uh, I, 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 w- I want to make this work. Okay, what do you want to do? I want to make this work. So what are you willing to commit to? I'm willing to commit to dot, dot, dot. Perfect. And then I need you to do this as well, because they're gonna ask you too. I need you to commit to that, that, that. You always put the family guilt over me and I don't like it, you go home early. Great, I'll work on that as well. So how about we put a schedule to get an understanding together? No problem. See, then there is commitment from both sides to each other. Then there is a level of accountability and then you start paying attention to results and then the company starts growing. This is a thing that is very common. I didn't make this video for you to go out and get upset at your business partner. I made this video for you to address the trust issue with each other and understand the conflict as a part of growing a business. Now, 
if you haven't yet started a business, if you haven't yet started a company, it's like if you haven't yet gotten married, well, now you got enough data to make sure you know to do it right before you decide to make the next step of creating a business partner and teaming up with somebody because now you have the information. And by the way, one of the most common questions I get asked is the following. So, Pat, Pat how, do I, how do I choose the right business partner as well as how do I work with family and business? I have a video for each one of these, okay? So if it's how to choose a business partner, click on this one. If it's how to work with your family in business, click on this one. I've experienced with both and I share my insight with you on how I address it. Both of these videos can help you. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. Click on the link below here. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.